Om Namo Narayanaya, welcome back. Today we're going to be reading a really short Upanishad called the Bhikshuka Upanishad. Let's dive right in. Here we go. Mendicant monks desiring liberation are of four kinds. The Kutichaka, Bahudaka, Hamsa, and Paramahamsa. The Kutichakas, the hut-dwelling aesthetics, such as the sages of yore like Gautama, Buddha, Bharat, Vajra, Yajna, Valkya, and Vaishista, subsist on eight mouthfuls of food and seek liberation alone by the path of yoga. Next, the Bahudaka aesthetics, remaining mainly in a holy place of sacred waters, who carry a threefold emblematic staff and water vessel and wear tuft, sacred thed, and ochre-colored garment. Avoiding wine and meat, they subsist on eight mouthfuls of food secured as alms from the houses of Brahmana sages and seek liberation alone in the path of yoga. Then come the Hamsa aesthetics who shelter for one night in a village, five nights in a town, and seven nights or more in a holy place, subsisting on cow's urine and other products from the cow, and always addicted to the Chandrayana vow, they seek liberation alone in the path of yoga. Then there are the Paramahamsa ascetic, such as the sages of yore like Sambhattaka, Aruni, Svetaketu, Kshada Bharata, Datatreya, Sukha, Vamadeva, and Harita, who live on eight mouthfuls of food and seek liberation alone in the path of yoga. They take shelter under the shade of trees, in deserted houses, or in a cemetery. They may wear a dress or be unclad. They observe neither dharma nor adharma, being that they are above the laws of the land, and they are not conscious of profit and loss of anything. They discard the doctrines of Visishta Dvaita, that being the doctrines propounded by Ramanuja, the Sutta Dvaita of Madhavacharya, and the Asuda Dvaita. Considering equally a pebble, stone, and gold, they receive alms from people of all castes and see the Atman alone everywhere. Unclad, unaffected by pairs of opposites such as heat and cold, night and day, receiving no gifts, solely adhering to pure meditation, established in the Atman alone, receiving alms at the prescribed time for sustaining life, taking shelter during nights in a deserted house, temple, haystack, anthill, shade of a tree, potter's hut, a place where ritual fire is kept, sandy bank of a river, a mountain thicket or cavity, a hollow in a tree, the vicinity of a waterfall or a piece of clean ground, they are well on the way to realize Brahman. With pure mind, they give up their bodies in a state of renunciation as a Paramahamsa. They are indeed the Paramahamsas, as they become absorbed in Brahman. Thus ends the Bhikkhushuka Upanishad. Uh, two notes. One, did you notice at the beginning it mentioned Gautama Buddha, which dates this as post-Buddhist. Uh, I always find that kind of interesting to see this other religion mentioned in there. Also, uh, Paramahamsas, you probably know better than the names listed here, you probably know that in terms of Paramahamsa Ramakrishna, the teacher of Vivekananda, whose life is very much as described here. So this is an interesting Upanishad because it feels just like, uh, like a short textbook excerpt. It's, it's describing these four months, which is great. You, you have it right here, kind of who they are, kind of, sort of, uh, not in super detail, but it does outline that there are different types of mendicant monks roaming in India. But what if you're not in India? And I'm not a mendicant monk, and I will never meet a mendicant monk unless I go to India. So the question is, what do you do with this Upanishad? It's a question I ask a lot on this channel for many things I've read here. What can we do with this? You know, and also, here I am doing this in America. If I found a man who was roaming around 
unclad, living in the shade of a tree, I would avoid him. Because I wouldn't consider him a Paramahamsa. I would consider him a homeless person, who may or may not be dangerous. And at some point, he would be arrested for being naked in public. So it literally, it's impossible for these, you know, this person to exist. In, in, who's described here in the society that I live in and that many of you probably live in. So again, what do you do with this? I don't know. I'm going to be honest though. Um, so this is the, let me check my list, 20th Upanishad that I have read. I don't know if it's the 20th that has gone out because I don't always edit them in order. But I have to confess that I found these Upanishads not as thrilling as I hoped. <laughs> they're, they're interesting, some of them fascinating to me. There's a few on Om that are just mind-blowing. I just think you should absolutely read those. Others, like this one, I'm kind of like, what do I do with this? What do I do with this? I, and I don't feel often like I get enough out of the Upanishads, and I'm a little shocked by that, because I was really looking forward to Upanishads and diving into them, but it just seems scattered and brief. I don't know. So I divided them up into 27 groupings. Um, so after 27, we'll, we'll switch to something else. Partly so this channel is not only Upanishads for the next year, but also because I, I, I'm a bit bored by them. They, they just, I don't get excited about them like I do um, wanting to read some other things. And I just want to put that confession out here uh, this, this is, uh, this is, a uh, yeah, I just, yeah, I just really wanted to say that. I wanted to be honest about reading these. I am reading these as I feel it's important, and I, I feel we should read them like a Christian should read the Bible, or a Muslim should read the Quran, or, you know, or you should study the Torah, or whatever. I think it, we ha should read these things, and we don't, but... I'm going to confess, I'm not always enthusiastic about it, and I'm doing it, but it's it's sometimes tough. I go days and days without recording a video, I'm just like, uh -huh, I'm not inspired always. Anyways, um, thoughts and all that stuff down below, you know how it goes. Thanks for hanging out with me. Like I said, this is Upanishad 20, once we hit 27, we're going to go back to the Srimad Bhagavatam. So please stick with me though, and... Uh, Let's let's discover this together. Love to hear thoughts. Harry Krishna, Harry Krishna, 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 Harry, 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 Rama, Harry, Rama, 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 Harry.